Yo guys, this video is brought to you by Motion Array. Motion Array is a fantastic little site. They have over 80,000 post-production assets from music to background videos, titles, lower thirds. And what's really nice, they also have some for DaVinci Resolve, which I'm a user of DaVinci Resolve. You got Adobe After Effects, Premiere, they got you covered. Definitely, links down in the description below. Take a look at that. Other than that, let's get to the video. Yo guys, me Patrick LaVar, back again with one of my one minute videos. Today I was out with the Zunyin M2 and I wasn't happy with its movements. A lot of times the settings were just a little bit herky jerky, but also I have to blame it on myself because I haven't been using the gimbal in a while. But today I was out with the Motion Cam app. Now there's audio available in it, which is really cool. But I'm still having some issues trying to get the best shots out of it as possible. Every time I close the app, I just used to not remember the settings and I kept forgetting to change or lock white balance or change the auto ISO or the focus. So still learning, but it was still fun. Keep filming. Patrick Lamar. Yo guys, me Patrick LeVar. So in this video, I was out shooting with my gimbal here. I had the M2 Zuyen, 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 Zuyen M2 gimbal and motion cam app. Motion cam app has some updates. Now we can record audio with our files. So I went out and I had, I was like super excited. I went out and shot some shots um, using the gimbal. And um, I also had my Samsung SSD hard drive, 250 gig hard drive. And basically sometimes I have it actually connected to my phone. And as I record, it will save straight to that. But since I was using a gimbal, I would film, fill up my phone, take my hard drive, connect it to my phone, unzip everything, download everything to the hard drive, clearing off my phone, and then keep doing that, rinse, repeat, and then keep doing that. And it allowed me to just to keep recording as, until my battery died, basically, on my my uh, my phone. I didn't run out of space. So quickly, I want to show you guys the workflow that I do to bring all these files in. I know some people in the, uh, in the, in the group there were asking a lot of workflow questions. So I'm going to show you how I did it. It's not the best, I mean, but it's something, right? So quickly here, I'm going to jump in into Venture Resolve. And the first thing I do once I have I have everything on my SSD hard drive. Now, the first thing you want to make sure you do is when you go to when you fire up DaVinci Resolve, make sure you go to the page where it allows you to bring it's the first tab here on the bottom. You can see here. Um, and what I'm going to do here is go up to these little dots. There's three little dots right here. Click on that. Go to frame display mode and you want to make sure you're in sequences because sometimes it's an individual or maybe an auto. If you bring in a folder, for example, let me just quickly show if I go to individual, right? And I click on one of my folders, I drag it inside of here. What it's going to do is it's going to bring in all the pics as individual files, as individual photos. And like now, this is not this is not going to work, right? This is not going to help uh, get a sequence. So undo that. What you want to do is go back to these three little buttons and go frame, go to sequences. Now, if I drag the same folder in, boom, it brings it in with the audio file connected because there was a container file now on, on the zip files I noticed. And now everything is ready to go and I can even preview. If I double click here, now I can see it's actually a sequence of videos basically. That's it's basically the files are one video, right? So what I quickly do here is go to my timeline and I'm gonna go ahead and drag both of these files in. Boom, they come in kind of wonky donkey. So I'm just gonna drag this over, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. All right, boom, that's pretty much what I shot, right? Pretty nice, I like it, cool. So what I will do is, um, basically I don't want all of that, so I'm gonna trim it to where I want just to help me out as far as my timeline, trying to stay as, as running as clean as possible. I'll go ahead and press Control B, that does a delete, and then if I hit delete, ripple delete. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this section here, and let's say I wanna play out, and I want it to kind of push in, and we'll go all the way into roughly there, right? Because my audio is going to end anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and click this. I'm going to get control B. It's going to set a, a little delete. And then I'm going to hit delete, right? Now I have it all. So now I think I ended up shooting my, my crop. Everybody's device is different. I have a Samsung Note 8. So my crop settings were 49% to 60. So basically I had 20, 56 by 12, 10 aspect ratio. Now, 
I want to, on my timeline right now, I have it set for 19, 20, 10, 80, uh, 24 frames. What I want to do is I, wanna, I want the black bars. I want the little cinematic black bars to be in my video once I render it natively, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to my, my settings. And one thing I do is color management. I switch my color manager to DaVinci Resolve uh, YRGB color management. It kind of already knows what kind of image I'm, I'm working with, right? See here, SDR, right? And then I'm going to go to master settings and I'm going to go ahead and change my aspect ratio for my, my whole setting. I'm going to set this to 2040 by 860. And that's going to allow me to have my black bars when I render it on a 1920 uh, rendering setting, which I'll show you here in a minute. So I have this clip. Now you can see, let me go ahead and close this out really quick. I have the black bars on the side. That's not what we want, right? We just need to fill in the space. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to go ahead and go to my inspector, scroll all the way at the bottom where it says uh, retime and scaling. And I'm going to go ahead and hit scale and I'm going to go fill right now. It allows me, it, they sucked it up. Now it allows me to, to reframe. I can go up or down as far as if I go to the position Y, now I can frame up my shot. If I want it more here or more on the bottom, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room to reframe it. On the sides, not so much. I really don't have any room on the sides. I think I have one or two pixels. I'll see you guys very subtle on the side. So, but that's if you want to reframe your shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in another one because sometimes the audio doesn't come in correctly. Like I've had some where it just doesn't bring in the audio. So if I go back here and press media pool, and let me actually, we need to go back to another sequence. I need to bring in another file. I'm gonna click on this file here, drag it in, and it's bringing there both. Now sometimes if this doesn't happen, if it doesn't bring it in together, I've noticed that sometimes it will happen. What you do is you'll drag it in, right? Here's my audio, my, my video, sorry. Click on this, and then if I press here, metadata, my metadata tab, if you look right here, it says the file name, right? Raw video file name, and then these last three numbers, 609 is what I want. So literally, I would just come in here and look for 609 audio file. Oh, there it is, 15609, and then drag that in there, and then boom, now I have my audio for that video, right? And then if we hit play on this, let's see what we got here. Okay, now again, you see the black bars are on the side. I need to do the same process here. I need to go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom, scaling, and go to full. Okay, now it brings it in full. And then again, I have some room to uh, reposition this shot a little bit more. I'll say I probably want a little bit more on the bottom there so we can see what's going on on the bottom. And then it looks like on this one, yeah, the white balance wasn't locked. Dang it. So that one, the white balance is shifting from blue to there. But hey, whatever. I forgot to lock it on that one. So what I would do is I'll probably end up just using this part of the clip here, control B, select these, hit delete key, and then in the front, let's say, there's a little bit of part where I was prepping the move on the gimbal and I went back and then I went forward. So I'm gonna go ahead right there, control B, select what I want to be deleted, and then just hit delete and it ripple deletes it. So I got these two clips, right? Now, what I also would do, going to quickly show you, if you want to do some color grade adjustments, go in here to your color grade wheel, and then you press this little camera icon, project, scroll down to clip. Now I have full control of all my raw settings. Like say on this clip here, I know that the colors were shifting a little bit on the warm side. So here I would just go to my color adjustment and just kind of kind of just shift a little bit back towards the blue a little bit because I so. Okay, that looks good there, right? And then you can make whatever uh, adjustments you want here. And then after I do all this, what I tend to also like to do is just add a little bit of warp stabilizer or stabilizer, or warp stabilizer for you guys who use Premiere. I add a little bit of stabilization to my shot, especially when I'm using the gimbal just to, to knock out those micro jitters, right? Let me go ahead and close that media tab. So if I go down to here where it says stabilization, click here, and I typically like to do maybe 0.5, half, or 0.6. Sometimes I don't like to do too much because then it gets all warpy, and I don't like that. I don't like that seeing that in my uh, my video. Then I hit stabilize, and this is the nice thing about DaVinci Resolve, the free version. You still have access to the stabilization in the free version, which is fantastic. I used to use Adobe Premiere. I, I had the whole Adobe suite, and after I literally canceled that and went to DaVinci Resolve, I've never regret going back. Like this is uh, the power that I have. Control is just fantastic. So there, boom. Let me go ahead and make that full screen. 
All right, good. I got that. It looks like I missed the focus on that a little bit too. But now what I would do here, now I want to export, right? So I jump over to my export tab. Here's my settings that I've been using right here. I have a little preset. If I wanted to upscale it, I would just go from HD. I'll go down here to 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD to upscale it since we got, you know, raw DNG files, 24 frames per second. And then I restrict to 40,000 kilobytes, just a little setting that I'm um, something I've learned over time editing. And that's pretty much all I would do. I'll go ahead and export that out. Boom. And, you know, you're ready to go. That's pretty much the workflow that, you know, from DNGs, make sure you got that sequence thing checked and bring in your sequence sequences once they're on your timeline you're ready to go you can just start editing and uh to probably in, improve your playback i typically sometimes go up here to timeline proxy and i'll knock this down to quarter resolution or if i'm really struggling with playback i'll right click on the um on the um on the actual clip and then i'll go right here to uh genera gener generate optimize media and it will basically make like a proxy file and then once it's done you need to make sure you also go back to playback and make sure here it's checked use optimize media if uh if available so i'll go ahead and optimize this one here too go ahead and do quickly do that and this will help with the playback a little bit and then boom let's see if we can house the playback now full screen not bad it's not bad it's, it's playing back a little bit more smoother there and see those little micro jitters for me i would definitely use a warp stabilizer on that and uh compared to this one Super nice, right? I love it. I love it. I love it. And I need one other thing I want to make sure here. I think, uh, let me see, custom settings, full resolution. Okay, that's all right. Okay, good. Full res project settings. That's all good. So I hope that helps you guys. You know, just a little workflow video. Uh, I'm getting back into jumping into this app. I was super busy. I just released my mobile photography class guide. Uh, it teaches you how to, to basically shoot with your camera in manual mode uh, from basic shooting to some basic uh, editing, color grading, stuff like that. Links down in the description if you guys are into that and you really want to improve your photography. Other than that, Patrick LeVar, definitely Motion Array. Tech them, take a look at them. I love the stuff that I'm using. It's really saving my my time to work on other things than sitting there, you know, 20, 30 minutes trying to build a nice little cool lower third. I can just download one, slap it in the program, and I'm ready to go. So, Patrick LeVar, keep filming. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.